Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salam Khan here. And today we start the new topic that is the properties of LTI systems. We have seen the properties of the convolution operator. Now we see LTI systems. So these are what? These are again the same basic properties that we've seen in chapter number one. Uh, the memory, uh, invertibility, causality, stability, linearity, and time invariance. So we know that these are LTI systems, so they have the properties of linearity and time invariance. So these two are done. Uh, so we only have to check for four more properties, out of which we start the first, that is memory. Number one, memory. So, I, you know that we know that the LTI system is completely characterized by its unit impulse response. Fine. So, these properties we will be discussing on the basis in relevance with the unit impulse response of the system. Fine. So, now let me write the, the, the equation if I have. So, let's say first in the discrete time domain if I write the equation. So what is the equation that y of n is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of k h of n minus k. So now you know that depending on memory we could either have a memory less system or a with memory system. So, if you talk about a memory less system, so it would only depend on the present inputs. Memory less first. So, if I say I could write the present output is equal to present uh, input only. Right? Right. And the with memory system, of course, can depend on the past and the future values. So, first let's talk about the present input, present output, memory less system. So, over here, have a look. We have a variable k, which is ranging from negative infinity to positive infinity. It is ranging from negative infinity to positive infinity, which means that it includes all the values. It could be the past value or it could be the present value and it could be the future value fine and when is this so when n is less than k when k is less than n you have the past value let me write it with the red color when k is less than n you have your past value when k is greater than n you have your future value and what we need is the present value so we only get the present value when n is equal to k so you would be getting the present value only when n is equal to k fine so now when this thing happens n is equal to k so n minus k would become zero n minus k would become zero and we would require an h of 0. We would require an h of 0. Right? But again, if we have h of 0, if we have some value to that, so that would not be our uh, uh, required thing. Our required thing would be this particular thing, x of k. So, what do we do is, that if we require only h of 0, so if we, re sorry, if we require only this x of k at, at what point? At n is equal to k point, which makes an n minus k 0, so which means that we require x of k with h of 0. So, with h of 0, we only have a single, we only have a single function that exists only at this uh, 0, and that is your impulse function so which, which whose values is one so if you multiply an impulse with this x of k you will get only you are required x of k that is the present value fine let me tell you if n is not equal to k when n is not equal to k so what happens in that case 
uh, n minus k won't be zero. So let's say that n minus k is some particular value of time, right? So I would say what in that case, when n minus k is not equal to zero, I need the impulse response to be zero. I need this whole thing to be zero to multiply it with something to get a zero again. To not get anything. So if I make this h0 for this particular case, when n is not equal to k, I make my h equal to 0 so that I don't get anything at my output because I am not interested in that for memoryless systems. So what do I get? What is that function that will give me 1? that would give me some value at a required point and it would be zero otherwise is my impulse function is my impulse function so which means that what do I do that for memory less systems that for memory less systems if I write so for memory less systems what would be the case? My impulse response h of n would be something delta of n and, and it could be an integral multiple let's say k times delta of n and this is the criteria. The impulse response would be k times delta of n which means that h of n would be 0 when n is not equal to 0. You could also write it in other terms that h of n would be 0 when n is not equal to 0 and it would be an impulse located at 0. Fine. And for, uh, and for uh, with memory systems of course uh, for with memory you would have the opposite case it would not be a multiple of this thing h of n would not be a multiple of delta of n. So that is the memoryless and with memory systems. If you, if you go further into it, if you go further, that is if you put your impulse response in that particular equation, so if you have y of n, this is equal to what? Uh, uh, let's say the summation you have your x the input and then you have your impulse so that would be now let's say delta of n minus k fine yes k times delta of n minus k so so what do you have is you have put your impulse response in that particular equation so you get out of this is what your k times x of k y of n would be k times x of n or x of k what x of n right and similarly for the discrete time for the with uh, this is for the memory less system for with memory system what would be the case y of n would not be equal to k times x of n and now what you can deduce from here is that uh, if k is equal to 1 if k is equal to 1 so what do you have is you have the y of n which is equal to x of n so this means that this is an identity system this is an identity system and from here we also learn again that for an identity system the impulse response h of n is the impulse function delta of n fine so this we start for the discrete time case now you can also have a discussion on the on the continuous time case which i believe you can do it for yourself right but let me have a little touch so in continuous time y of t is the integration like this x of tau h of t minus tau and this is integration with respect to tau. Now again, what happens is that you need the values, you need only the present values if I need, that is for the memory less system. So I will get those present values only 
only when t is equal to tau. So t is equal to tau would be my present value, right? So when t is equal to tau, I need this thing to be 1. I need this whole thing to be 1. So which means that I need h of 0 to be 1, right? Because t minus tau would be 0. So this means that I need h of 0 to be 1. And when t is not equal to tau, when t is not equal to tau, so which means that t minus t is non-zero. So I need this whole h to be zero. I need this particular thing to be zero to give me the output zero to just finish out the thing. So I need my total h to be zero. So now what is again the criteria that would uh, satisfy this condition that I need is, so you need to say that for, for memoryless systems, the impulse response h of t is something k times delta of t. Fine. And similarly again, for, for the with memory system, what do you have is, for with memory, uh, with memory systems, the impulse response would not be like that. ht is not a multiple of the impulse function that is what is this and similarly you can have it like this again the identity system and this and that the impulse response of an identity system is delta of t that is it for this first property now let's say we discuss the second i rub the board first Okay, and uh, let me also check the book if we have something. No, we don't have anything. You can read out the book, okay? Still, if you have any point, you can ask anytime in the comment section. The second property is, let's say we discuss invertibility. Following order of the book, yes, it's invertibility. Invertibility. Now, based on invertibility, a system can be invertible, a system can be non-invertible. So, let's say we discuss the criteria for an invertible system. What happens if a system is invertible? So, an invertible system means what? That for a unique input, you have a unique output. This is the case. And another thing is that for an invertible system, its inverse system also exists. Its inverse system also exists. So now let me let me define this invertible system. If you have an input x of t, you give it to a system. Let's say this system is invertible. So this would give you what? This would give you an output that is y of t. Now, if this system is invertible, so this inverse system would exist such that if you give the output of the invertible system to the inverse system, it gives you the input back that is your x of t. This is the criteria for an invertible system. Now, if I enclose this in a single box, if I enclose this with in a single box, so what do you think is it? What do you think is it? Yes, you're right. This is an identity system. This is an identity system, which means that the final output that you're getting this y of t this is equal to the original input that we have applied, x of d. And we just saw that the impulse response of this identity system is the impulse function. Fine. Now what do I do? We have got two systems, right? So if I name the impulse response of this system as h1 of d, 
and the impulse response of this system as H2 of t and I know that the overall system response is an impulse function so I also told you in the previous video that if we have to replace cascaded systems within a single system so what do we need to do? We need to do what we need to convolve the individual individual responses so this would be the case this would give me x of t back this is because this is the identity system so what do we have is h1 of t convolved with h2 of t this is and this is an impulse function right and similarly you can also have for the discrete time case as well that h1 of n convolved h2 of n this would be an impulse function now how did i write this how did i write this okay so you know that how did i write it because uh, the overall system response h of n was what was an impulse function delta of n right and the system was two cascaded so h of n was equal to what was equal to the convolution of the two so h1 of n convolved h2 of n or, or t or whatever so this is how you get which means that the criteria is that if you have a system if you have a system and you want to check if this is an invertible or not so you have to find another system so that if you convolve the responses of the two together you get an impulse function that is the criteria and what is this so h1 is basically that i have represented so this is basically the response of the invertible system and this h2 that i have represented is the response of the inverse system to get a unit impulse function and that's it that's it simple as it is So I believe the book has an example on it, a simple uh, delay function, right? Uh, yes, it's a simple uh, delay function. Uh, X of example. Y of t is X of t minus t naught. So now, depending on the value of t naught, if t naught is positive, t naught is positive implies what and t naught is negative implies what. So t naught is positive implies a delay and t naught is negative and implies an advance. Isn't it so? Or it could be the opposite, you know it better than me. Right, so uh, let's say, what do I do? I am asked that is this system invertible or not? So I check it right. The impulse response is first known. First, you need to find the impulse response of the system, right? So the impulse response of this system, h of t, this would be equal to delta of t minus t naught. Fine. Now what do I need to do to, to check for the criteria? I need to uh, I need to convolve this impulse response. with another impulse response to give me a delta of t minus t naught to give me a delta of t so let's say for the first case for this case i have a t naught that is some positive value let my t naught to be some positive value so if this is a delta of t minus t naught so this means that this is delaying the signal this means that this is delaying the signal. So now, if I have a, an input and I have provided it to a system which has delayed the, the signal. So now I need to get it to another system to give me my signal back. So what would be this system? This would be an advanced system. This would be an advanced system. So T plus T naught would be the case. And I would get my 
original signal back at the output so delta of t this would also be delta of t this would also be delta of t which means that this system this system yes this is an invertible system so that's about it that's all about these second property so i believe i finished this lecture over here the two properties we discuss in the next video very soon till then take care goodbye